It takes a while to fast. So you just gotta be patient and know that God works us the Lord gracious and bless us, God, to protect us. Help us in everything that we find to come to God for help and to stop paying in mind. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Views expressed on this program are not the views of ZNS TV 13 and, by extension, the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Tune in to the program Living by Faith with Bishop Valentino Williams of Life Changes Ministries International, Sundays at 5 30 p.m. on ZNS TV station. Prepare to be inspired, impacted, empowered, and transformed. Remember, the just shall live by faith. This prophet here is not for sale. This prophet here comes to declare what thus saith the Lord. Watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Coming, coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the weekend edition. Prime Minister Davis lauded as a global impact leader. Police on a viral video. Urco investigating outages. And in sports, Puerto Rico defeats Team Bahamas. The Bahamas tonight, the weekend edition, starts now. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. I'm Jiminita Swain. Topping news. It seems the cries of the public are being heard, at least from the Utilities Regulation and Competition Authority. IRCA is currently conducting an investigation into numerous outages in electronic communication services throughout the Bahamas in recent months. It cited in August alone there were significant outages in Andros, the Berry Islands, Exuma, Inagua, Miaguana, and Ragged Island. Acknowledging, however, that all services have since been restored, ERCO officials said outages and disruptions such as these and those documented in previous months have led to increased public concern over the reliability and quality of electronic communication services in the Bahamas. ERCO shares that concern and has been consistently engaging with all stakeholders which includes the Bahamas Telecommunications Company. In fact, it disclosed that on September 1st, IRCA met with BTC's executive leadership team to discuss the most recent outages and the company's mitigation plans to address reported outages. BTC has assured IRCA that to date, it has addressed the outages and the company is taking the appropriate measures to avert these issues going forward. Now, while IRCA has met with the leadership team of BTC, the utility regulator said it's, it's conducting its own inquiry as to the underlying or root causes of the outages. IRCA said it's committed to working with its stakeholders, including the government, service providers, and the public to effectively strengthen the delivery of electronic communication services in the Bahamas. Meantime, police issuing a statement this afternoon in response to a viral video making the rounds on social media saying the organization is aware of it. In the video, two police officers are seen on a golf cart pursuing students clad in their uniforms, the driver urging them to get to the bus stop. When a teen appears to respond to the officer saying he was just getting something, seconds later the officer rushes from the cart and the teen is struck from across the back with a cane before being hoisted up by his pants. It appears that the teen is then roughly thrown on the golf cart, the ex entire exchange lasting about 14 seconds. The release from police continues. The organization is concerned about the behavior displayed by the officers involved and has subsequently launched an extensive investigation into the matter. Now to news from the overnight crime report, police on Saturday nabbing the persons believed to be involved in a late-night armed robbery on Bacardi Road. In police custody, a 22-year-old man and a 28-year-old woman who reportedly robbed a man of his cell phone and an undisclosed amount of cash. The driver of the black Nissan Note intended to be the getaway vehicle is still at large. And police also on the hunt for three men who ambushed a couple as they arrived at home. According to reports, it was around 11.30 when the couple met three men on their doorstep, 
who pulled out a firearm and forced them into their Malcolm Road home. The trio robbed a couple of cash and personal items before fleeing on foot. In other news, a legal aid clinic on Saturday finding scores of attorneys out of the office and present at Bahamas Faith Ministries compound to administer advice to those who need it most. The free clinic made possible through the Community Legal Aid Program, an organization formed through the collaborative efforts of the Eugene DePooch Law School, the Office of the Attorney General, and the Bahamas Bar Association. Those seeking legal advice received 30-minute advisory sessions which specialized attorneys. We spoke to attorney Merritt Store, who has more on this initiative. Sometimes we can point those persons in the, in the right direction. But additionally, there are people who um, may need legal assistance beyond what we can give them in a 30-minute session. Um, and they may need ongoing support. A special honor bestowed on the Prime Minister overnight, the nation's leader, the guest of Onyx Magazine, who presented him with a special award Saturday night during a gala banquet in Orlando, Florida. Our Carla Palmer was there. The convention center at the Rosen Resort in Orlando, Florida was filled to capacity as hundreds of people, more than expected, turned out to the awards ceremony honoring Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis. Among them, United States Congresswoman Frederica Wilson. He is so deserving. And number one, let's remember that he has appointed more women to his cabinet than any other prime minister. Let's keep that in mind. So he has been a consummate leader. Reportedly, it was the prime minister's consistent and targeted body of work, with emphasis of his ongoing commitment to addressing the issue of climate change, that has caused for this recognition as this year's recipient of the Global Impact Leader of the Year Award by Onyx Magazine. Rich Black is president, editor and chief of the Gazette. Well, it's the climate change is those things that was happening post-COVID in a nation where the resource really is tourism. And he was able to bring back the Bahamas from the abyss, um, also with vac vaccinations that he provided to the island. We felt that he was just doing the work as a leader. And because he was not just there in the country, but he was making it a global connection. I had never seen that before in a prime minister. I'm not saying that it ever happened. It's just that I had never seen it. He's our modern day Michelle and Barack Obama. He and Miss Anne Marie Davis. So we were very impressed with his work. Prime Minister Davis was unpretentious in his acceptance. Um, I'm humble. It's not an award that's really that, that um, that's just about me. Because I think whatever I've achieved is through the inspiration of the behaving people, people who be around me, my wife, my family, uh, and, and those persons who have been supporting me, the people of Cat Island, Rumpkins, and Salvador all these years. Because I would not be here were not for them. And so I'm humbled by this award. In fact, the Prime Minister says the award gives him the impetus to carry on. Well, this, this, this inspires me. I, uh, with, with or without this award, I was going to continue. But I, I can say it does add fuel to the tank to continue. From Orlando, Florida, the Prime Minister is expected to travel to Chicago on official duty before returning home. Reporting from Orlando, Florida, I'm Carla Palmer, ZNS Network News. Also making news tonight, we recently shared with you the concerns on the level of coral bleaching currently taking place in the Bahamas due to warmer waters associated with climate change. Historically, experts have projected that by 2050, most coral reefs will be wiped out due to global warming. Executive Director of the Perry Institute for Marine Science, or PIMS, based in Florida, Dr. Craig Dahlgren, addressed concerns of this coral bleaching on the tourism product. Uh, what the bleaching event is going to mean to people is, is still a little bit fuzzy right now. We, we're not quite sure. We need to see how bad the, the death rate is from this bleaching event to see. But um, it will affect reefs. It will cause their overall health to decline. And because corals are the, the foundation of building these reefs, um, when you don't have living corals, the reefs start to deteriorate. They get covered with seaweeds and stuff that's not as attractive for visitors. 
and a lot of organisms start breaking down the the structure that they create actually um like an abandoned house falls down over time that's what's happening on reefs the Berry Institute is a nonprofit organization focused on ensuring the health and longevity of the ocean. For more than 50 years, it's been doing just that with a mission to preserve coral reefs and vital fisheries in the Bahamas and the Caribbean. Dr. Dahlgren notes reef health will be impacted due to what's occurring now. Over time, it'll contribute to the decline that will affect the, the tourism product. It will affect the ability of reefs to serve as a breakwater against coastal storms and coastal erosion, things like that, and may also have an impact on fisheries. So uh, it could have a significant long-term five plus year impact on uh, all these economic drivers in the Bahamas. At this point, officials will likely revisit the coral reefs to assess the health of reefs for bleaching and the stony coral tissue loss disease within the next six months. Well, still to come in the weekend edition, the National Youth Choir in celebration mood. We'll tell you why after the break. With the help of our authorized financial institutions, or AFIs, using sand dollars is as easy as one, two, three. Step one, identify your preferred AFI by browsing their websites or contacting them directly. Step two, download the free mobile application from Google Play or the Apple Store and then register for a sand dollar account. Step three, load money onto your mobile app and begin sending and receiving sand dollars or purchasing and selling goods and services. We are pleased to be your central bank approved digital water providers. It does not matter which of us you choose. You can pay for goods and services wherever sand dollar is accepted. We are all in this together. Visit sanddollar.bs for more information. This portion of the news is brought to you by Full Call Smart Pass, the smart way to pay at the pump. Welcome back. The University of the Bahamas, Sentinel College, and the University of Guelph are just some of the tertiary institutions that participated in a college fair for the staff of the Nassau Airport Development Company, their children, and the wider aviation community Thursday. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism Investments and Aviation, the Honorable Justa Cooper, and NAT officials made the rounds at the fair that included representatives from 32 local and international institutes. He says it provides an opportunity to expose young people to the possibilities in education and scholarships. Had it not been for scholarship, I wouldn't have gone to university. Uh, I wouldn't have been uh, able to participate in business or be deputy prime minister. So this is an important opportunity for young people across the country uh, to be able to access education. And uh, we, through NAD, are bringing the opportunities to our students. And I think this is a fantastic uh, opportunity. Uh, NAD has done this, uh, and uh, the organizers have done this for about eight years. NAD is doing it this year as an important opportunity for their employees and the children of their employees. President and CEO of the Nasser Airport Development Company, Vernice Joaquin, says NAD was pleased to have the event put on to provide the opportunity to expose its more than 3,000 staff and their children to educational opportunities and scholarships. 
But there are those people who work at the airport who themselves want the opportunity to further their education, whether it's in aviation or airport management or some other related field, because airport operations today requires a broad discipline. And so we thought it was a good time for this kind of an event to be held to expose people who work at the airport to the, all of the options that are available to them and or their children. So we're really pleased to have been able to stage this today. And I want to give thanks to Charlotte Knowles Thompson for making this happen. And she's an employee of NAD, but she also does this very important work for the community. This October, the Bahamas National Youth Choir will hold a number of events to mark the choir's official 40th anniversary. Members of the Alumni Association of the Choir, which includes several notables who have excelled in the local and regional entertainment industry, post their stints with the choir, are the organizers of these celebratory events. Courtesy calls are planned on the Prime Minister and Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, and in a monumentaling ceremony at the graveside of choir founder and longtime director, cultural icon, the late Cleophus Adderley. The week of activities climax with a gala black tie celebration at Bahamar. The event, styled an evening with our divas, is dedicated to showcasing the exceptional Bahamian talents who started their musical journey in the National Youth Choir. This is a significant time for the Bahamas. The National Youth Choir was founded on our country's 10th independence anniversary. And now, four decades later, we celebrate our country's golden anniversary while the choir celebrates its 40th anniversary. Zenovia Pierre, Naomi Taylor Crawford, and Anya Bo are among the past choir members and anniversary divas. They shared how being in the choir and working with Cleophus Adderley helped shape their musical careers. Like, we're all, we have this ethic and this, yeah. this performing thing that's instilled in us that we know no matter what, the show must mm -hmm. go on. That he, he took time with us just to make us what he thought we could be and to make us the best that we could be. But the biggest takeaway for me was the family that I had attached to now. Mm -hmm. So now uh, Mr. Adley was able to impact people from all different walks of life, from all different generations. The Bahamas National Youth Choir's 40th anniversary celebrations take place October 1st through 7th. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit the Alumni Association's website at bnycalumni.org. Now for eSports enthusiasts in the Bahamas, they say traction is now being made to develop the sport and possible industry locally, following significant attention from the international market on speed capabilities within country. To this end, President of the Bahamas Esports Foundation, Michael Armagon, suggesting that the time is now to prepare. When it comes to gaming or esports, it's not just competitively playing. It's coding, it's shoutcasting, it's dealing with media, it's legal. It's, it runs an entire industry, and every single area of it needs to be filled. And the only way to actually get that filled by Bahamians is if we train them. Despite this challenge, Yamagon feels the best is yet to come, especially with Yamakra Member of Parliament and Environment State Minister the Honorable Zane Lightbourne identifying the possibility of eSports summer camps nationwide. The coding, um, all of those things that we want our children to learn that will help in their development and to grow into their own. And as an educator, this is what I saw in terms of getting a esports gaming camp that we intend to do every year. I know the Bahamas has been really trying to put a focus on Grand Bahama as the tech hub of the Bahamas. So it makes sense that they would want to take the STEM or STEAM element of that and actually try to build that into the Grand Bahama DNA. And honestly, I think it's a great idea. It's something that the Bahamas desperately needs, especially when it comes to young kids and even people just looking to get into the field or industry just on a whole. In case you missed the news or want to stay ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on X, TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook.
are New Life Natural Company Limited, and we have actually been in the community for now 13 years, serving in the health field. Our diets is probably one of the most poorest diets actually in the Caribbean, and we are really low in the world. As a result of our diet, we are actually inheriting all of these different diseases. So we need to kind of like shift the way how we eat and shift it to eating more healthier food. So we at New Life here, we are trying to change the paradigms. We are actually introducing tasty, healthy options. And so hopefully this SPDC initiative will actually create the awareness, help us to have an understanding of what we are doing, why we are doing it, and help us to begin to shift this paradigm of proper eating, proper dieting, and proper fitness. So our motto is eat well, be well, and let your food be your medicine. For more information about the Fitness and Wellness Initiative, contact the SBDC at 461-7232. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station. Open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount, and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. For hurricane season, we got impact windows and doors. For protection, just come to our store. Plus, we got tiles to pretty up your walls and your floors. We love you bad now for that big bad storm. For sun and tiles, blank tiles, mosaic tiles, a variety of styles. Before teens get right, they gotta be rough. That's why we got the best deals in the whole Bahamas. Hey! This is ZNS Total Sports. Welcome to your Sunday sports, everyone. I'm Amajal Knowles, Bahamas men's national team, hosting Puerto Rico yesterday at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium, the first CONCACAF Nations League encounter between the two countries. Puerto Rico making its League B debut after a perfect mark of 4-0 in League C to gain promotion. Things would look promising for the Baja boys early, finding the back of the net in the first minute to strike first blood. But after that, Puerto Rico would go on the offensive and score six straight goals to emerge with the six one win. Of course, um, obviously there's a different, a different team, a different style of play. So we have to adjust to, to identity. Like like Peter said, um, obviously we have nothing to lose. We need to take risks. We need to get up the field, and by doing that, we'll we'll get our chances. Obviously, in the first couple minutes, it was electric. We scored the first goal, great goal but we, we kind of let them come at us a little bit too much and we gave them too much respect and I think we should have. We needed to, we, I think we underestimated ourselves and we, we definitely could have played a lot better than we should have in the first half. Like, uh, like William said, like the first few minutes of the game, like it was like the, the perfect start for us. Like we scored the opening goal, a beautiful goal, a beautiful team goal. And it just like, like you said, we fell asleep and allowed a few, a few mistakes happen and a few goals to go in. But one of the main things I like today, adopting today, is that we found, our, uh, we found our identity. Like we realized we, we can play the ball. Like normally we would try and sit back and like allow teams to come to us and hit them on the press. But today we, we saw and, and like we executed and realized that hey, we can play with the big teams. We could move the ball and get into the half and create dangerous chances. I think going forward, we just have to trust ourselves more and be able to be confident enough to take some, a few risks. And that way we could like get, 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 on, get on, on the score sheet earlier and continue to score more and more goals and look forward to winning more games. More from this game in tomorrow's sportscast. With the reopening of schools, here's a look at the 2023-2024 sports schedules for the government and private schools. The GSSA starts with volleyball, followed by cross country, basketball, athletics, softball, and baseball and soccer will close things out. On the BAISS ledger, they start with softball on September 18th, followed by cross country, swimming, basketball, athletics, soccer, and volleyball will close out their season. And that's Move Future Sports on this Sunday. A check on weather when we return. This is ZNS Total Sports.
vibrant heart of the Bahamas, a common loftier goal unites us all. A place where love and unity thrive, where world-class technology is accessible and affordable, connecting every generation. We believe in our heritage and the boundless potential that lies within us. We believe in Bahamians. With the help of our authorized financial institutions, or AFIs, using sand dollars is as easy as one, two, three. Step one, identify your preferred AFI by browsing their websites or contacting them directly. Step two, download the free mobile application from Google Play or the Apple Store and then register for a sand dollar account. Step three, load money onto your mobile app and begin sending and receiving sand dollars or purchasing and selling goods and services. We are pleased to be your central bank approved digital water providers. It does not matter which of us you choose. You can pay for goods and services wherever sand dollar is accepted. We are all in this together. Visit sanddollar.bs for more information. ZNNS wants to thank all those who entered the new college freshman giveaway. And out of all the entries, 15 finalists have been chosen. These finalists will be receiving prizes from Comfort Suites, Security Depot, Atlantis Resort, Cafe Channing Noel, and BTC. We want to thank our sponsors for these wonderful prizes. We also want to send all contestants the very best wishes and good luck on a successful freshman year in college. It's time now for a check on tonight's weather forecast. Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean joins us in studio with the latest temperatures. Good evening, Basil. Uh, good evening, uh, Geminator. We have partly cloudy skies this evening. Temperature 87 degrees. A relative humidity just around 66%. East side, east winds at 6 miles per hour. The biometric pressure 1,016.0 millibars. That's 30.00 inches. And your temperatures around the family of islands. 87 in Marsh, Harbabaco, Green Tool, Key, and also Freeport, Grand Bahama, the Berry Islands at 88. Isle of San Bimini, 83 degrees. 90 degrees in Harper Island. Roxanne, Elutra, 86. 89 in Black Point, also, Kemp's Bay at 89 degrees. Fresh Creek Central Islanders at 88. 86 in Otterstown, Cat Island, San Salvador, and Room Key. Georgetown, Exuma, 88 degrees. 87 in Rygut Island, Clown Sound, Long Island, Crooked Island, Betsy Bay, and Acklands. Matthew Town, Inagua, 91 degrees. And the Turks and Caicos Islands at 89 degrees. And your boating forecast uh, tonight through Monday in the northwestern parts of our country will we'll continue to experience light and variable winds with flat seas. Low tide takes place at 19 minutes past midnight. Now for the central Bahamas through Monday, northeast winds at 10 to 50 knots, wave fights 2 to 4 feet. And for the southeast Bahamas through Monday, winds northeast a little stronger at 12 to 18 knots, wave fights 3 to 6 feet. And they will also be experiencing some large swells in the southeast Bahamas through tomorrow. And uh, taking a look at what's happening in the tropics, Lee now at... Uh, just a Category 3, it's back in winds of 120 miles per hour. It's some 285 miles to the north, northeast of the northern uh, Leeward Islands, moving towards the west-northwest, so it has not changed uh, that uh, trajectory, continuing west-northwest, and has slowed down to about 8 miles per hour, so any time soon, it could start to make that turn towards the north, with some intensification taking place over the next uh, couple of days. Could bump up, 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 up to a Category 5 before settling at a Category 4 as it passes power parallel to the archipelago of the Bahamas. And the satellite pictures are showing the massive structure of Lee out there in the uh, Atlantic, and that has those feeder bands, and some of those will be affecting parts of uh, the extreme southeast Bahamas as it gets a little closer. But until then, high pressure will remain in control of our weather with a slight troughing across the extreme northwestern Bahamas. Mainly clear and very warm tonight, 81 degrees for your low temperature, and tomorrow, mostly sunny, high temperature of 89 degrees, 6 Extended weather forecast looking like this. Beautiful weather right through Saturday, despite the fact that we have a massive hurricane that will be passing well to the east of us. Temperature-wise, summer-like temperatures in the low 90s, and those nighttime temperatures, they fluctuate between the upper 70s and low 80s. Jim Anita. 
Thanks, Basil. And that will end the Bahamas tonight, the weekend edition. We thank you for continuing to make ZNS your number one news and information network as only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNS. On behalf of the entire team, thanks for watching and good night. You're watching the ZNS Network.